Let's continue praying in the English responsively. In a world torn by violence and pain, a world so far from wholeness and peace, give us the courage to say, Adonai, there is one God in heaven and earth. May heavens declare your glory. May earth reveal your justice and love. From bondage in Egypt, we were delivered. At Sinai, we bound ourselves to your way. Instructed by sages, time and again, we overcame oppressive forces. Though our failings are many and our faults are great, it has been our glory to bear witness to our God, keeping alive in dark ages your vision of a world redeemed. Let us continue the work for the day when the nations will be one and peace. Then shall rejoice as lead <coughs> We continue now with Hashki Venu on page 161. We continue with Hashki Venu.
life's storm together. Let We know that the people of Israel keep Shabbat in the same way that Shabbat has always end. Please, God, will always keep us and strengthen us. So let us turn to the words of Vishamru on page 162. Vishamru Continue now, Alyssa will be leading us in the beginning of the tefillah, which can be found on page 164, and we'll ask you please in body or in spirit to rise. Adonai 
Ata kadosh v'shim cha kadosh v'kadoshim b'chol yom yihalilu chasela baruch ata Adonai ha'el ha'kadosh. Please be seated. May these hours of rest and renewal open our hearts to joy and our minds to truth. May all who struggle find rest on this day. May all who suffer find solace. May all who hurt find healing on this day. May all who despair find purpose. May all who hunger find fulfillment on this day. And may this day fulfill its promise. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hamikadesh HaShabbat. You are with us in our prayer, our love, and our doubt. In our longing to feel your presence and do your will, you are still, you are the still clear voice within us. Therefore, O oh God, when doubt troubles us, when anxiety makes us tremble, when pain clouds the mind, we look inward for the answer to our prayers. There may we find you, and there find courage, insight, and endurance. And let our worship bring us closer to one another, that all Israel and all who seek you may find new strength for your service. Baruch Ata Adonai, Sha'otcha, Levadcha, Bayirana Avod. When we behold your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you set in place, what are we humans that you are mindful of us? We mortals that you take note of us. You made us little less than divine, adorned us with glory and majesty. You gave us dominion over your handiwork, laying the world at our feet. How majestic is your name throughout this earth. Baruch Ata Adonai, Hatov Shimcha Ulachana Elahodot. Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tatsim Le'olam Shalom Rav Yisrael Amcha Tatsim Le'olam Ki Atom El Adam Le'ol Take a few moments, each of us, for the prayers of our heart, for some silence, some prayer, some meditation.
There are many in need of prayers at this time for healing, for strength, for patience, for kindness, for compassion, for community support, for grace. And we're holding each of them and each of the layers that are connected to them in our prayers as we say, Mishaberach, Avotenu v'imotenu, Avraham Yitzchak v'Yaakov, Sarah Rivka, Rachel v'Alea, Huyivarech et Cholim. May the one who blessed our ancestors, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, bless and give what each best needs to those, each of those who are struggling. This evening in our prayers, we are holding in our hearts Shana Esther Bat Rochel, Sarah Bat Avraham Vizsara, Alan Skirker, Laura Braun, Stephen Brent, Rini Feingold, Irving Manis, Kim Stanger Delisle, Gabriel Berger, Brian Mansfield, Michael Shartok, Miriam Nemitz, Casey Zachman, Ali Goldsmith, Barbara Petro, <coughs> Valerie Brownstein, Liz Steinberg, Stephen Breiger, Claire Cowing, Linda Champion, Allison Rohr Sakelli, Sarah Postelnik, Stanley Niskoda, Gwen Tucker, Steve Whitaker, Dennis Linsner, Yoka Adar Stam, Jamie Rosenzweig, Robin Trimble, Jean Harris, Shana Pies, Richard Rosenblum, Yoel Eliyahu Ben Baruch Yosef Vihudit, and Marilyn Feldman. If there are names that you would add to this list or names that are better spoken aloud by you, please, as I look your way, would you share those aloud? And from home, Louis Magnani, we say, May the Blessed Holy One be filled with compassion for wherever possible health to be restored and strength revived. May God send renewal of body and renewal of spirit, and let us join together in saying, <clears throat> Amen. Amen. Page 371. <clears throat> <clears throat> are not typically a good mix. One of my daughters remains completely silent on the short drive to school while the other is a little more conversant. And each morning, when I drop them off, I say, have a great day, and I love you. Have a great day, because that is my hope. And I love you, because that is my heart. And with each passing day, my deepest, darkest fear that it may be the last time.
I have the chance to tell them. As an adult, I can still vividly recall how school fire drills interrupting our classroom learning used to be a treat, a completely unexpected time to be summarily released from class and an opportunity to see friends other than at lunch. Now our kids have to shelter in place, lock down, and have active shooter drills, learning where best to stand or hide in a classroom where they will be less likely to be visible and shot. Now our kids learn how to barricade a door with desks or by propping up a chair under the door handle and commit to action if there is an intruder. Now our kids don't necessarily select a seat in class based on where their friends are seated. Now they wonder if it is better to choose a seat near a door, closer to an exit, or in the middle of the classroom, far from a door or a window. And these are not drills that anyone looks forward to. And we must ask ourselves, what is happening? Today is the 147th day of the secular year, and the shooting in Uvalde, Texas marks the 212th mass shooting of 2022. Again, in 2022, we have had more mass shootings in the United States than we have had days in the year. Unthinkable, unimaginable, unbearable, or it ought to be. How can any of us possibly process the violent and tragic deaths of 19 children and their two heroic teachers less than two weeks after a hate-filled, racist massacre of 10 at Tops in Buffalo? How is it possible that there are those in the United States who tolerate the pro proliferation of guns while at the same time profess to be pro-life? Do not believe those who say that this is about politics or geography and that this is about our individual rights. This is about callousness and self-interest and power and a disregard for the sanctity of each human life. What ought to be the inviolable right to go to school, to the grocery store, our houses of worship, a dance club or a concert and not worry about our safety or our very lives is no longer the case. Friends, like so many of you, my heart is aching, broken, filled with despair. And I know I am not supposed to stand up here and say that, that I should be a source of comfort and hope, but like so many of you, I am struggling mightily, watching and reading the news in horrifying disbelief that we are here again. But here's what I do know. We cannot only struggle, cannot only be devastated. We cannot say that someone else will fight this fight. We can be in all of those places or some of those places and know that there is quite possibly no more urgent work than this that must be done. And that when people argue that this is no time for politics but a time for comforting and for prayer, we ought to say to them as committed Jews, yes, our hearts are broken and our prayers are most assuredly with all those who are suffering. Yes, we are praying for the victims for their family and friends sorely in need of comfort. We are praying for the complete healing of the wounded. In our prayers, we are asking for strength too, for our first responders, the medical personnel, for religious leaders, for chaplains of all faiths, and for mental health professionals who seek to solve wounds that will not soon heal. But we ought also to say, without equivocation, our prayers root us, 
but are no substitute for righteous action. Ours is a prophetic tradition. Ours implores us to heed the injunction from Leviticus, which says, Lota amod al dam reecha, you shall not stand idly by when your brother or your sister bleeds from Leviticus. And ours is a tradition that demands, that teaches, that implores us, chizku imtsu, to be strong and of good courage. For our God is a God of justice, and our tradition is one which makes clear the sanctity of human life with the Talmud teaching us that he who takes one life, it is as though he has destroyed the universe. And he who saves one life, it is as though he saved the entire universe. And now, now is the time to be strong and of good courage, not to be numb or inured, but to act, to vote, to encourage, encourage others to vote, to write and to call our elected representatives. The US ratio, of 120.5 firearms per 100 residents is up from 88 per 100 in 2011. That is the increase, far surpassing, horrifyingly, that of other countries around the world. It is madness. Now is the time. Call or write your elected representatives and urge them to support a ban of semi-automatic assault weapons and high-capacity magazines, to make gun trafficking a federal crime, and to insist on universal background checks on all gun sales. Call on them to support funding, increased funding, to improve access to mental health services. Look and take part in the reform community's efforts to, to combat gun violence. Go to the Religious Action Center and you will find action alerts and news updates and the latest information about gun violence and how to be involved and an advocate. Consider joining or donating to Moms Demand Action or Every Town for Gun Safety or the Brady Center. And so too, as self-indulgent as it seems, this is also a time to take care of ourselves to be able to fight this fight. So be here, be in community. Strive also to, to find and identify a little bit of the good, to pay much more careful attention to one another, to be here, to be outside, to weep and to comfort, to reach out especially to our youth and our teachers, our friends, family, and coworkers, even if just to say, I don't know what to say, but I'm thinking of you today. Now is the time for intentional kindness, to find moments of chesed, to find moments of grace and kindness, to be thankful and to love more boldly. Let us weep, love, and act. This is the prayer I shared earlier this week at the Interfaith Vigil, a prayer for numbness. Merciful and loving God, we stand in grief with devastated families across our nation, across the globe. We weep as we must over the incomprehensible loss of life. We cry out in shock, confusion, and pain as we mourn the senseless acts of violence and destruction in Buffalo and Texas. But so too do we gather here tonight as a testament that we will never become inured and numb to such horrific, horrific acts of gun violence. For when evil darkens our world, we cannot turn, our turn away or wring our hands and continue on. No, we must allow our hearts to feel each of us in a way that is fitting, the gut-wrenching shock of people being gunned down in a grocery store for nothing more than the color of their skin. We must feel the sharpness of our collective pain and outrage at 19 innocent lives of elementary school children and their teachers being brutally snuffed out in the prime of their lives. It ought to wake us in the middle of the night. It ought to bring us to tears as mothers and fathers, sisters and brothers, aunts and uncles, people who are black and brown and white, people of every faith and no faith, 
lesbian, bisexual, gay, transgender, and straight people, all of us who sojourn this same earth responsible for one another. God, we plead, do not let us grow accustomed to violence, ever. Let us remember that no matter how heavy the darkness, to be clear and persistent bearers of light. Bless us and work through us, O God. Rab Rabbi Naomi Levy offers us these brief words of prayer. Turn our helplessness into action. Teach us to believe that we can rise up from this tragedy with a renewed faith in the goodness of our society. Shield us from indifference and from our tendency to forget. Open our hearts and our hands. Innocent blood is calling out to us to act and pass the laws that will stop gun violence. Remind us that we must fight the overwhelming numbness protecting us from despair and that we must commit ourselves to preventing further bloodshed with all of our hearts and all of our souls. Teach us perseverance and dedication. Let us rise up as one in time of soul searching and repair so that all people in all places can live in safety with dignity. And from our very Sidur, from our Shabbat worship, we pray, disturb us Adonai. Ruffle us from our complacency, make us dissatisfied, dissatisfied with the peace of ignorance, the quietude which arises from a shunning of the horror, the defeat, the bitterness and the poverty, physical and spiritual of humans. Shock us, Adonai, deny to us the false Shabbat which gives us the delusions of satisfaction amid a world of war and hatred. Wake us, O God, and shake us. Disturb us, O God, and vex us. Let not us succumb to the darkness. Let this be a time to be stirred and spurred to action. And let us join together in saying, Amen. We continue now on page 586 as we turn to our concluding prayers, the Elenu, and we'll ask you please to rise. <laughs> pause now to think of our loved ones whom death has recently taken from us, those who died at this season in years past, and those whom we have drawn into our hearts with our own. During the period of Shloshim these last 30 days, we are mourning the loss of Harry A. Sultz, uncle of Marilyn Fenster, Anne Asterita, mother of Lynn Gatto, Carl Voldman, father of Jeff Voldman, Saul Goldstein, grandfather of Carrie Greenberg, Jody Schneider Light, sister-in-law of Michael and Candace Light, and Harriet Fletcher, aunt of Lily Voldman, taken from Buffalo too soon and so tragically, we are mourning the loss of Aaron Salter, Ruth Whitfield, Pearl Young, Catherine Massey, Robert, Roberta Drury, Hayward Patterson, Celestine Cheney, Margus Morrison, Andre McNeil, Geraldine Talley. And from Uvalde, Texas, we are mourning the loss of Uzziah Garcia, Jose Flores, Amiri Joe Garza, Xavier Javier Lopez, Navalle Bravo, Alethea Ramirez, Tess Marie Mata, 
Alexandria Anaya Rubio, Leila Salazar, Makina Lee Elrod, JC Levanos, Jayla Nicole Siguero, Eliana Garcia, Eliana Cruz Torres, Annabelle Guadalupe Rodriguez, Jackie Cazares, Mate Yulena Rodriguez, Rogelio Torres, Miranda Mathis, Eva Morales, Irma Garcia, and just 48 hours later, her husband, Joe Garcia. Today marks a yard site, an anniversary of passing for Edwin Albert, Albert, Miriam Altman, Leonard Ball, Ruth Belanoff, Evelyn Berlowitz, Nathan Buren, Gerald Cooper, Kenneth Kramer, Roby Faber, Helen Feldsot, Arthur Fink, Thomas J. Finnefrock, Judy Green, Alan Green, Anna Hiller, Florence, Florence Hutkoff, Shirley Jacobson, Ruth Kadelbach, Herbert Kaplan, Hilda Kyle, Anna Coleman, Simeon Khrushchev, Stephen Lappin, Jacqueline Levine, Peter Manasowitz, Mildred Manasowitz, Bryna Mendelson, Faye Perlman, Murray Pess, Thelma Sarnov, Jewel Scheller, Susan Wendy Schifrin, Joan G. Scho Joanne G. Schoenfeld, Maisha Schuster, Manuel Schwartz, Minnie Spector, Charles Elliot Steinberg, Nam Vovchik, Joseph Weiner, Morton Whiteman, Bernard Yellen, Esther Bell Land, Zacher, and Zev Ziskin. If there are other names that you would add to either list, or names better spoken aloud by you, please, as I look your way, share that name or those names aloud. And from home. Zichronam Livracha, may each of their memories be for a blessing as we turn to page 598 for the Mourner's Kaddish. Yit Kadal, Vit Kadash, me Rabba, Belma Divrach Yerute, Viam Lich Malchute. Bechayechon of Yomechon, Uvchaye de Hol Beit Yisrael, Bagala of his man Kari Vimru, Amen. Yehe Shme Rabba Mivarach, Leolam Ulme Umaya. Yit Barach Vish de Bach Vit, Paar Vit, Ramam Vit Nase. Vit a Darvi to Levi to Lal Shme to Kudishab Rihu. The Elami called Birchata Vashirata, Tushbechata Venechamata. Da Amiran Bail Mavi Mru Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vechaim Alenu Vail Ko Yisrael Vimru Amen. O Se Shalom Vimru Mav, Huya Ase Shalom, Alenu Vail Ko Yisrael Vail Ko Yoshvete Vail Vimru Amen. May the one who creates harmony on high bring peace to us, to all who are mourning, to all Israel, as we join together in saying Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We want to thank Sharon Silvio for being our board greeter this, this evening and, uh, and, and to the whole Wackerman family on the eve of Alyssa becoming a bat mitzvah. We are very excited about tomorrow morning and uh, Torah study is winding down but we are still meeting tomorrow at 9.15 on Zoom only and then Shabbat morning service where Alyssa is more than ready and excited, I know, to lead us uh, at 10.30 in our Shabbat morning services. Anybody who wants to see us off on Sunday morning on the confirmation trip, we will be here at 5.45. <laughs> Rabbi Katz, I know you would like to join us. Our office is closed on, on, uh, on Monday morning for Memorial Day and, uh, and back open on Tuesday. Please mark your calendars for June 1st for the next Social Action Committee program, Democracy Under Threat with Robert Lieberman at 7 p.m. And then a week from tonight, let us gather outside Hopefully all will be beautiful and warm and lovely and we'll have an opportunity to be under the stars and welcoming Shabbat at our guests more. Shabbat, bring your own picnic dinner and, uh, and we will have goodies for dessert and, uh, and, and good spirit throughout. So join us for, for that time as well. And then next Saturday morning again, Torah study at 9.15 and then services at 10.30 where Miles and Morgan Brody will be called to the Torah as a B'nai Mitzvah 
and that day isn't finished yet, we have that evening air of Shavuot and confirmation at 7 p.m. So join us for what promises to be a very robust weekend. You get us kind of started, Alyssa, and then we continue onward. We want to offer Mazel Tov to Mike and Heidi Fishman on the birth of their granddaughter, Nora Audrey. She is the daughter of Dan and Marissa. Please, please, please mark your calendars for the entire weekend of June 17th and 18th, the Friday and that Saturday, where we will have a very special artist, Rabbi Debbie Zecker. We are celebrating, finally, Rabbi Katz. I have to stipulate now, Rabbi Alan Katz, uh, who, who uh, never got his proper and fitting celebration because the pandemic kind of wormed its way in. So we are delighted to be able, finally, to, to honor and celebrate Rabbi Katz with Debbie Zecker, who will be our scholar and performer in residence. You'll see all the information for Friday night services and Saturday morning services and Saturday Havdala and a program as well with her. She is not to be missed. Um, many donations that are needed. Donations for Buffalo and for Texas and for those who are, who are still very much in the thick of things in, in and around Ukraine, you can fall, find each of those places on, on our website. Uh, and, and please be sure, as best you can, to support in one way or another. Many, many places in need. Any, any, um, any announcements, any celebrations, any, anything that we should know about from where you sit or from home? Okay, then we will continue. We'll invite the Wackerman family to join us for Motsi to give thanks. And, uh, and then we will turn to our closing song. conclude with our closing song, Olam Chesed Yibane, which is a, a beautiful and powerful song written by Rabbi Menachem Creditor just after actually, after 9-11 and really speaks to the possibility, the promise, the hope, the aspiration of our being able to build this world from love. <clears throat> you a Shabbat Shalom and hope that you will join us in the social hall for a short oneg. Wish you good health and good spirits. A Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. <laughs>